welcome to today's Disney Music Breakdown, where I explain the significance, inner workings, and what we learn from every detail during Disney's most magical songs. Today's tune comes from a wonderful film that is set during a time of war. When Mulan's father is called to serve again to face the invasion by the Huns, and after Mulan's identity feels shaken, she refuses to allow him to sacrifice himself. So she steals his armor, runs away from home, and takes his place. But as an impersonating soldier of the Chinese army, she must rise to become a warrior capable of defending her country during the song, I'll Make a Man Out of You. Hello, I'm Isaac from Watson Videos, where we discuss fun topics for fun people. I'm focused on spreading magic by explaining Disney films, so if you're new here, consider subscribing. Over the past few weeks, a YouTube channel by the name of the Super Carlin Brothers have been conducting a bracket of Disney songs by having their followers vote on each point in the bracket to discover the fan favorite jam. I know I've been following along on my Twitter at Watso Videos, and it's been really fun to watch unfold. Beautiful songs were pitted up against one another, and while some thrived unexpectedly, others I felt were taken out of competition too soon. But one rose to the top, and that was I'll Make a Man Out of You. So to celebrate this song's rise to internet fan beloved status, it felt like a fantastic time to break this song down. Oh, and by the way, if you like to hear about something cool I'll be doing with the Super Carlin Brothers over the summer, make sure to stick around till the end. The Huns were descending upon China, which meant it was time to get down to business. Shan Yu and his men had already accomplished the massive feat of crossing the Great Wall, meaning they had successfully breached the northern border. And this monumental moment is important because it shapes the reasons Shang and Mulan met as soldiers. The reason these two individuals, who are the focus of I'll Make a Man Out of You, meet is because of the decisions made by Shang's father, General Li, and the Emperor. With the news of the Hun invasion, General Li's instinct was to set up defenses around the palace to protect his ruler, but the Emperor disagrees, instead requesting his people are guarded. The Emperor also decrees China must prepare for the war to come against Shan Yu, so he demands the training of a formidable army. Deliver conscription notices throughout all the provinces, call up reserves, and as many new recruits as possible. This is the decree that led to Fa Zhu being asked to return to his duties as a soldier in the Chinese army, which in turn led Mulan to take his place, even though General Li believed his troops were capable of defeating the Huns on their own. The Emperor, on the other hand, was not so willing to put his faith into one faction of his army. I won't take any chances, General. A single grain of rice can tip the scale. But after attacks across China and General Li's continued belief in the main troops, he decides to attempt to defeat Shan Yu's armies on his own, even though he's just received a group of recruited soldiers who require training. I will take the main troops up to the Tangshao Pass and stop Shan Yu before he destroys this village. Before he sets forth on his journey, General Li grants the responsibility of training the next wave of soldiers and the promotion to captain to his son Li Shang. Although Shang is honored, with a war coming to their territory, being scrutinized by the Emperor's Council, and with the large expectations of his father, Shang is faced with a great deal of pressure and a diverse and incompetent set of troops. One of those not too proficient troops was of course Mulan, who hadn't earned a favorable reputation with her fellow soldiers. Quickly Mulan was pinpointed to be a weak out of place lunatic, and the troops were ready to show their opinions of her through punching, as tough boys do. Shane wouldn't permit this behavior though, for it was time to prepare for war. The Huns were coming, the stakes were set, it was time for I'll Make a Man Out of You. As the Eastern and Western styles of music begin with the rhythm of the drums, the first trial required of the soldiers was to scale a massive wooden pole to seize an arrow at the peak. But by the lack of performance, it was clear to see they had a long way to go before they would be competent warriors. When they began to train with staffs, Yao knocks over Mulan, revealing the soldiers' dislike of her further before Shang reveals to the troops the level of skill an accomplished warrior has. The recruits are shocked by Shang, showing how little experience and familiarity with this training they have. As Shang questions whether his men are daughters or sons, which reveals their current association of women with weakness, Ling puts a scorpion in Mulan's shirt, which results in her making a fool of herself and knocking over most of the troop. Shang admits when viewing this display that the people before him are the saddest bunch he's ever met, showing he is critical and honest with the people before him. Even though he knows the soldiers will take a great deal of work for them to improve, he feels confident he can transform them into men. While Shang remains optimistic though, Chi Fu happily watches on for his respect for Shang's abilities 
were low. After Shang shows off his expertise at target practice, he tells his troops they must be calm but intense, tranquil as a forest but on fire within. Mushu doesn't allow Mulan to discover that balance for herself though, as he places the fruit they are meant to hit in air on Mulan's arrow just before Shang comes over to her. Again, Shang is disappointed in the actions Mulan is taking, further degrading his faith in her skills in the war to come. Shang then teaches them the importance of finding their center, so that they can understand themselves and act successfully, seen through him keeping his balance as he is barraged by rocks. When it's Mulan's turn, Yao and Lang happily get to belt her with rocks, leaving Mulan off balance and inaccurate with her return hits. Shang is again frustrated with Mulan's lack of implementation of their training exercises, and he lets her know he believes she's a spineless, pale, pathetic lot without a clue as to what is going on, but he hopes somehow he will be able to reach her. Although Shane desires to do right by his soldiers and create a strong group, it does seem he questioned if he had a way of actually doing that for all of his recruits. When Mulan and Yao are tasked with catching a fish with their bare hands, Mulan is not very accurate, so Mushu attempts to help again by bringing her a fish. Mushu is trying to assist her to be accepted and praised in the army, but to truly accomplish that in an honorable fashion, she would need to find success on her own. Although Mulan was struggling, she was not alone. Shang didn't know how to get these troops battle ready, and neither did they. They feel out of shape and unable to catch their breath. Yao thinks he's going to die. They are unskilled, and Mushu even points out they are scared to death for the pressure of war was being placed upon them and the hard road was paved ahead. And on top of all of that, Mulan fears her failures could lead to her gender being exposed. The troops are far from prepared for combat, seen through them all missing the one Han target during rocket training. The only bit of the camp that gets destroyed is Chi Fu's tent, which is pretty fitting since he's the camp's most immediate threat. He's the one who doesn't believe in any of them and their ability to grow, but Shang is having difficulty remaining committed to his soldiers as well, seen through him sighing on top of a hill, looking down at the camp, which has people mystified by the pole and arrow challenge. Shang feels the levity of the war weigh on him, and he just doesn't know how he can get these inexperienced men to a place where they can be noble warriors. If they fail, he will fail along with them, and the soldier's inability to grow troubles him. This is why on the day they march with weights and Chi Fu notices Mulan lagging behind, Shang states they are all running out of time for the Huns will soon arrive. There exists no room for error when there are lives hanging in the balance based on their performance. So when Mulan collapses from exhaustion, he picks up her weight and catches up with the group, leaving Mulan behind. After witnessing Mulan's performance for what he believes to be long enough and knowing the pressure is on him to only produce great soldiers, Shang sends Mulan home. Since Mulan cannot survive the orders and trials crafted by Shang in training, he feels that she is just unfit for the rage of war, so he tells her to pack her bags in the night and leave. He promised to make her a man, hoped he could, but now thinks there is no way he can. But Mulan? is not done just yet. Mulan hangs her head in disappointment until she passes through the moonlit shadow of the massive pole that she stood next to. Determined to uphold her honor and believing she could truly thrive under the conditions of war, Mulan straps the weights, discipline and strength to her hands, knowing if she could be the first recruit to scale the pole, she could earn her respect back. Mulan may have left home to save her father, but when she decides to stay at camp, that is only for her. She was dissatisfied with the role she played when she was at home and was finally ready to unleash her strength, resilience, and power in the Chinese army. Thus, she takes action in this phenomenal moment. At first, Mulan falls when she attempts to climb the pole with the weights hanging separately, but when morning comes and soldiers awaken, she has figured out how to combine discipline and strength using her intelligence to her advantage. Mulan scales the pole as soldiers look on with shock. As she approaches the arrow, she inches out of the shadow of the night towards dawn, showing visually she's finally going to demonstrate herself as a capable warrior. We see the individuals who used to mock her cheer for her on the ground, and when Shang awakens and sees the arrow fall to his feet, he is visibly shocked and the soldiers cheer for Mulan. She had proven she was one of them. Then the instruments cut off and we focus on the chant that is being said as we watch the soldiers all come into their own. All of the soldiers take on the naturalistic descriptions of masculinity, including Mulan, who was able to show she could embody what was seen as valuable traits of being a man. 
They were all swift as a coursing river with the force of a great typhoon. They had all of the strength of a raging fire and were mysterious as the dark side of the moon. They nail the targets with the fruits. Mulan is the fastest runner in the troop. Mulan can now land a strike on Shang, which he is delighted by because he knows his work is approaching completion. They are nimble, and as the world transforms into a surreal single colored land full of white suits, which shows they are unified and dangerous, we see the troops are also cooperative and accepting, precise, tactile, tough, and quick. Both Shang and Mulan had completed their goals in that camp. Mulan had become a formidable and honorable warrior, and Shang had transformed his recruits into soldiers learning to respect them in the process, which meant all of them felt prepared to face the Huns that threatened their land. But now I'd love to hear your thoughts. Do you agree with me that I'll Make a Man Out of You tactfully shows growth of Shang and Mulan? And do you think this song deserves to have internet fan beloved status? Let me know below. Also, speaking of the Super Carlin Brothers again, they are having a total of four meetups throughout 2019 all across the United States, and I will be at the one in Chicago. At the meetup, you can come and watch the live action version of The Lion King with us creators and a theater full of Disney fans. And then after that, you can come meet Jay, Ben, DK, Jordan, me, and a bunch of other cool people. There are also t-shirts you can get and VIP experiences if you like to support the Super Carlin Brothers above and beyond, and I think it'll be a lot of fun. To get tickets to the Chicago meetup to meet us or any other Super Carlin Brother meetup, you can find the links in the description. If you'd like to continue to see more magical discussions like this one, then don't forget to click that subscribe button and the beautiful bell if you're new. And thank you to all my wonderful patrons over on Patreon who are amazing supporters of my videos. And finally, as always, thanks for watching and have a magical day.